then suddenly in August 1914, war is declared. And like almost all Austro-Hungarians, and especially all Austro-Hungarian Jews, he's an enormous patriot. And he immediately rushes back. To, he, he has written a, written a symphonic thing called On Mein Vaterland, you know, to my fatherland. And he rushes back, and he enlists in the officer corps, and he is uh, made a lieutenant in the infantry, and he is sent to the meat grinder of the Italian front. Do you agree with me that it's quite different from the earlier string quartet? 1919, 1920, 1921, it's, his music is being performed all over Germany, so much so that by 1923, he uh, is given a 10-year contract by the foremost music publisher in Germany, Schott, uh, and you get a sense of the spiky, propulsive uh, quality of its transformed quality with, with the Belusco, right? Uh, my arms hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give you one, some idea. Walter Gieseking, the great, great, great pianist, performed his piano, first piano concerto 50 times and was scheduled to perform it a 51st time in London in April 1933, but Hitler comes to power in, in March and Gieseking cancels that performance and never performs it again. Um, Schott, 1923-1933 says, oh, you know, something wrong. We're not going to renew the contract. The, all the things start, the whole world starts collapsing. From Paris, he goes on to London. He comes to New York. He comes to L.A., 1935, and he's part of that huge group I was telling you about. There's a photograph of him uh, with Otto Klemperer, Schoenberg, and he starts teaching at USC, but also private students over the next period. Andre Previn is one of his students, for example. Uh, and he starts composing for Hollywood. He had three Academy Award nominations. You know, he was doing well, but he was just, he was not doing his own music. He had had something like 35 opuses from 1918 to 1933. From 1933 to 48, he had eight. And really only one after uh, the start of the war itself. He is desperately trying to rescue his family back home. He has 64 cousins. When Sven and I conceived of this program, Ukraine hadn't happened yet. Uh, but in the month leading up to the, tonight, you know, I've been working on this piece, the collection of six pieces that Talk wrote um, right after the war, deeply depressed. We don't think of the plight of the refugees, you know, after they leave their country. I now understand what survivor's guilt feels like. 
I should mention, by the way, I forgot to say this, that, that of his 64 cousins, 32 perished in the Holocaust. grandfather is a atomic bomb survivor and my paternal grandfather um, went to a tropical island during World War II and during the war they could not have imagined me being a pianist sitting here talking to you today and playing music for you and sharing my thoughts and while talks life and music gives us a glimpse of you know, the sufferings that people still go through today. I also want to see this as an example of hope that we can still have 